this time. It is indeed a distinguished honor and privilege to have with us a good friend of this ministry for many years. It is not the very first time she is gracing our presence, so we have been graced by her presence. She has been with us, ministering to us, and times being a part of our service or function. Evangelist Heather Lashley is a powerful woman of God, Amen. an anointed woman of God. Hallelujah. One God has called in such a time like this. Hallelujah. To preach his uncompromising word. She declared the word of God without fear and fear. Such a person that gravitates to it. And she gravitates to people who love God and who take a stand for God. Humble servant of God. It is my distinct honor at this moment to call Evangelist Lash. Hallelujah. To minister the word of God without fear a favor. God bless you, evangelist. Traditions and beliefs. 
The city of Ur was given over to idolatry. So the people worshipped several gods. In addition to the god Sin, who was their chief deity, they also worshipped Nana, the god of fire, the Sumerian moon god, the sun and the stars. The false religion of astrology, which begun at Babel, was also practiced in Ur. Temples were constructed to honor the gods, and every female in the city, at some time in her life, would have to would have to take her turn in serving as a priestess prostitute in the temples constructed for idol worship. Biblical history makes known that Lot's grandfather Tira, who raised him after his father Haran died, made idols to be sold. And Joshua 24 verse 2 states that Tira also worshipped the various idols he created with his hands. This is the kind of idolatrous spiritual environment Lot was born into and was accustomed to since he was raised by a grandfather who would have encouraged him to worship idols and he lived in a city that was totally dedicated and given over to the wickedness and the abominations of idolatry. There is no doubt that Lot served the gods of his grandfather until Abraham's encounter with the one true and the living God which led the entire family on the right spiritual path. In other words, Lot rejected the polytheistic ideologies of the Chaldeans and he put his faith in the everlasting God who revealed himself to his uncle. Lot chose to believe in the one true creator and ruler of heaven and earth to follow God wherever he led him and to give God his full allegiance all the days of his life. Proof of Lot's spiritual transformation is recorded in 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 7 to 8, which says that God delivered righteous Lot, who was distressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked. For that righteous man dwelling among them vexed his righteous soul from day to day by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. So we understand that even though Lot was born into idolatry, there came a point and time in his life when he had an encounter with the one true and the living God after Abraham had his. Priority of creation gave Adam headship. This means that God created the man first and gave him the responsibility of head and household, which included leading his family in righteous living before Yahweh Elohim in all that they did and said. From this we can deduce that law, similar to Abraham, would have commanded his wife, his children, and his servants to walk up right before the Lord. Hence we can conclude that Lot, his wife, and children all knew the Lord and loved him, that they obeyed the word they received first hand from God, and they served him wholeheartedly in the manner prescribed by God. So he started out on the wrong spiritual path. But after his uncle's encounter with God, Lot followed suit, and he began to serve the God that had revealed himself to Abraham. The biblical narrative makes known in Genesis 13, 6, that the lamb was not able to nourish and support the flocks and the herds of Abraham and Lot, so that they could dwell together, for their processions were too great for them to live together. So the scripture is telling us now that because these men are serving God, God is blessing Lot and is blessing Abraham. There is a blessing in serving God. It doesn't matter what fiery trial you are going through today. It doesn't matter how difficult it may be financially. Whatever the Lord has allowed to come your way, God blesses those who trust him. Whether it is money or good health or good man. 
because the two wealthy men couldn't stay together. One pasture couldn't hold the amount of flocks and herds that God had blessed them with. They agreed amicably that they should separate from each other. And so Lot chose to go to, to the east where he pitched his tent near Sodom, a city where the men were exceedingly wicked and sinful against the Lord. Now notice that Lot didn't make a God decision in that he didn't consult God. But the Bible tells us that when he looked and he saw the luscious greenery in the east near Sodom, it looked like the Garden of Eden. And so he made the decision, he made the decision based on the saints' knowledge realm. It looks good and there is where I want to go. And so he headed to the east. This was the beginning of the spiritual decline of Lot's wife. Because in some ways, God is associated with moving away from God. The Bible tells us in Genesis chapter 3 verse 24 that Adam and Eve left the garden of Eden through the east. Says Cain left the presence of God and settled in northeast of Eden. Genesis 11, 12 tells us that when man multiplied after the flood, those who did not follow God went to the east. Genesis chapter 3, Lot and his family records Lot and his godly family, family living in the plains near Sodom. From it, Lot did not do this. He went to the path. There was no one in Sodom that invited him. He looked, he saw, he liked, uh, and he went where he wanted to go. First yes. Thessalonians 5.22 tells us to abstain from all appearance of evil. Yes. Romans 12.9 says, abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Uh, I want to say something here today that while uh, I might be quoting New Testament scriptures uh, or quoting from the prophets or the Psalms, uh, the word that is recorded in the we have in the Bible are words that God would have communicated to his people long before they were able to write it down in the beginning everything was passed on orally and so when Proverbs 14, 4, 14 to 15 says enter not into the path of the wicked and go not in the way of evil men avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it and pass away, Lot would have all The phrase living far from God refers to a spiritual state where a believer feels disconnected or distant from God's divine presence. Anytime you as a bishop, a pastor, or one of the five fathers, we call it an usher, a deacon, an elder. Anytime you are a believer in God and all of a sudden you feel as if you are far from God, Something is wrong. Uh, this happens when a believer neglects uh, his spiritual practices such as reading the word and prayer that are intended to nurture and develop your spiritual life. Uh, I want to say to you today uh, that you cannot reach that level of spiritual maturity uh, in your Christian walk with God uh, that you think you don't have to read the Bible uh, or you don't need to pray. You the word every day and that is what sustain you. God is always revealing and revealing and revealing the scriptures are inexhaustible. And so when you think that you have arrived, some of us have arrived pretending to title. The highest title within Christendom is the Archbishop and there are many who are Archbishops today. But while you might have arrived at the height of the title, you It's when 
one part who says, I know my wife in and out. There's nothing more to know about him or her. So I need a little excitement. Listen, you can never know God in his entirety. Because when you think you know him, God comes in another way that causes you to be amazed at his goodness and his graciousness. And so when the believers disconnect,
As a matter of fact, the Lord said to me by revelation, he said the day that the prophet came and told David what he had done to Bathsheba and Uriah, he said when David looked at what Saul had become, he said to me that day, David had no interest in the kingdom anymore. What was a priority for David was that he was not disconnected from the presence of God because David understood that the day that God was not with him, any old Philistine would walk off the street or walk into the palace and he would be a dead man. He understood the security. When you know that God is with you and he would rather be a shepherd again and have God with him than to be a king living in terror and fear like Saul was. We are not to go back. In speaking of the nearness of God, Moses says in Deuteronomy 4, 7, he says, For what great nation is there that has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is to us whenever we call upon him? And you've got to know that once you are living right, once you are living holy, that God is right there and God is with you. The apostle James says, Now this is the God that we have that if we know that he hears us then whatever we ask God in the name of Jesus Christ according to his will it will be done for us I might not be big in some people's eyes I might not be illustrious enough to be invited to certain places but one thing I know today is that God knows me and whenever I call he answers I don't have
May God's love move his family away from the holy God they serve. Genesis 14, 12 makes known that one year later, Lot was no longer living near Sodom. He was living inside Sodom, the city where the people were exceedingly wicked and sinful against the Lord. This is exactly what happens when the believer hangs around sin and keeps company with unsaved people and have unequally all relationships as best friends. Eventually, you will find yourself living in sin or practicing sin just like the ungodly people you keep company with. If you go to watch the West Indian parade every year, because one of your friends is in it or he or she said, come and see how I look. Eventually you will join the battle. Because the Bible tells us we are to have no pleasure in our righteousness. If you sit at the bar regularly during happy hour, it won't be long before you are having a bear margarita or tequila, my God. The Lord said,
the world may sweep around me with its dazzles and its dreams. Oh God, she said, yet I don't envy the vanities and pride because she was focused on heaven and the church seemed not to be interested in heaven anymore. It looks like if heaven is lost in space or something outdated or some kind of myth that you find this in Greek mythology. But I want you to know today that heaven is more real than planet earth because the earth is going to mend my mind. Thank God is through pouring out his judgments upon the antichrist and those who join with him against him. This whole earth that people are trying to buy and create islands and cities it is going to be gone. Lord move his godly wife and children into one of the most spiritually corrupt and immoral cities in Canaan to live in. A man of God, the Bible still says that law was righteous. Even though he was living in Sodom, he was still righteous. He didn't get involved with what the people in Sodom were doing, but he made the biggest mistake to think that he could convert the people of Sodom is a tactic that the enemy uses to get men and women into unequally your relationship or your marriage to him or cause him to become a Christian. And all you did was to marry a sinner and the devil has now become your father. And all who tells that son what to do to you. Oh, Jesus. The Bible didn't say it. Like no preached for 120 years. But Lot was just vexed and troubled by how the people lived. And, and it's amazing that it was evil men in that city that were engaged to his daughters. That Lot was going to sanction a marriage like that. But even though he, he, he maintained some kind of righteousness, he was making divine decisions that would profit the family. This brings to mind the pastor who took his two, two children to a concert where the performers in the occult, he, to, he like Lot, took his children to enjoy what God condemned and to be taken captive by the kingdom of darkness. And he was so proudly displaying how much his children loved him because of what he did for them to enjoy and experience. Let me tell you something. The world is lacking pleasure. The world is still looking for pleasure. Well, the Bible says that the pleasure of sin will last for season. There's nothing that you could find satisfying at a Springsteen concert that could give you that long-lasting gratification. There's, there's no movie, no Star Wars movie, how good it is that can fulfill. I want to say to you today, without any deceit or deception, real pleasure, real joy is in having a relationship with Jesus. Because they're concerned 
that if the stock market crash, that they're going to lose everything. I don't have that concern. My God is Jehovah Jireh. My God shall supply all my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. I want to say to you today, if God can trust you with money, he will give you money. There are some Christians that if God gives them money, they're backside. If God can trust you with a house in the hand, he will give you. If God can trust you with a Ferrari, he will give you. If God can trust you with the anointing that you are asking him for, he will give She was at the same demonic concert and they have no shame in putting their faces on social media. Landlocked, they're moving into Sodom and Gomorrah, isn't it? We're living in the last days and the Bible says as it was in the days of Lot, as it was in the days of Noah, and you find that those that you thought that had spiritual integrity, those that you looked up Job's action. 
passions and character can be interpreted as job rejected, the corrupt lifestyle and culture, and advice of the ungodly by emphasizing his commitment to righteousness and distancing himself from every ungodly influence. Yes. The church has to do that. Amen. One of the ways in which the world gets to, to silence the mouth of the churches. We like to ask for grants and donations. And when you go to the world and you ask for grants and donations, it comes with a criteria. I've known of one or two leaders who will go to restaurants and ask for money to pay for their radio broadcasts. And then they will preach the word of God and when they will go back the next month, uh, the owner of the restaurant will say, no, I'm not supporting you because you're preaching on alcohol and you're preaching on fornication. And that's how I make my money. <laughs> For me, everything that God calls me to do, I ask God to bless me with the money. I want to pay for it out of my pocket even if I don't get to eat chicken. If all I eat is tuna and bread, I'm going to pay for the broadcast because when I begin to read and preach and teach and expound, I don't have to be concerned about who is going to cut it off. Whatever God calls you to do, God is ready to find out. Amen. Amen. And he went to her fiance and said, you still have to marry her because the child that she's carrying is mine. And he was never dead. Be dead to know what God did. He brought wise men from the east that brought gold and frankincense and myrrh. God supported Jesus until it was time for him to preach the gospel. Mary had no financial stress. Joseph had no financial stress.
Now, if Lord was married before or after his conversion, it is evident that like many of us, Mrs. Law had come from a world of sin like her husband, and that she made the wise decision to follow his godly decision in serving Jehovah, unless like some in polytheistic, idolatrous cultures, she just embraced Jehovah as another god. Hence, eight years was more than enough time for Mrs. Locke to abandon God permanently, to become desensitized to sin, to be re-indoctrinated into an idolatrous culture similar to what she was accustomed to, and to become a committed practicer of unrighteousness. One would think that being delivered by God from the rigors of captivity and slavery would have been a back to God moment for Lot, but especially his wife. And that Mrs. Lot would have not wanted to go back to life in Sodom to relive an idolatrous and immoral life in the people of Sodom. Oh no, Mrs. Lot went right back to life as usual, to loving and enjoying what God had denounced. In reference to Mrs. Lot, Romans 1, 21 says, When she knew God, she glorified him not as God, neither was thankful, but became vain in her imaginations, and her foolish heart was darkened. I am sure, by virtue of the fact of who God is, a forgiving, loving, and caring God, that Yahweh would have told them not to go back to Sodom after they were rescued by him through the hands of Abraham. And that Abraham would have advised Mrs. Law not to go back to Sodom. Proverbs 26, 12 says that a dog that returns to his vomit is a fool who repeats his folly. Proverbs 12, 15 says the way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but the one who listens to advice is wise. Proverbs 14, 12 says it's a way that seemeth right to a man, but his end is the way of death. Proverbs 21, to every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord evaluates the motives. What is it that God has judged and condemned and delivered you from that you went right back to or you are tempted to go back to? Is it carnality? Because I know that to be holy now and to live a sanctified, consecrated life is detestable in the eyes of most people in the church. At the time that God said people wanted to be holy, and I would hear people my ears saying, my sanctified soul, and I used to wonder what a sanctified soul is. Like I, I wanted to experience this sanctified thing, and they just had a confidence about their sanctified soul. But thank God today my soul is sanctified. My soul is sanctified. My soul is sanctified by the word of God that makes us clean, by the purifying fire of God that burns away the dross and the impurities, by the regeneration of the Holy Spirit, by the blood of Jesus Christ that makes the violence to the clean, and by the act of
Don't be broken hearted. If they don't invite you back, glory. God is protecting you. Let me tell you something. I am yet to see a party that anyone could put on on earth. Hallelujah. From the world's most wealthiest man or woman that is a trillionaire that can compare to the marriage supper of the Lord. My God have mercy. I am yet to see a party. I am yet to see a banquet that can compare to the one that the Father has prepared for those who love and serve it. My God have mercy. If I still have few more qualities which I want, I know that I would not be number one, but I'll be saying, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. And in Jesus and I are going to see everything. Yeah. 
Jesus says in John 8, 34, truly, truly I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave of sin. In other words, when God uses the anointing to destroy the yoke of sin that kept you bound and bring you to a place of sanctification and freedom, and you go back to Sodom, it is easy for you to lapse back into sin that you were delivered from and to even commit worse sins against God than the ones you committed before you became born again. This is what makes it very difficult for you to break free from Satan's grip without God's mercy and intervention. I said, and even to commit worse sins against God than the ones you committed before you became born again. Something traumatic happened in my life as a young adult in my early 20s. And I backslid. And in my newfound freedom and liberation, I put an anklet on my feet. I knew it was wrong. I knew it was wrong. I knew its origin, but I am free at last. <laughs> and I was living in sin. And somebody must have prayed for me. Oh On the 31st of January, 1993, a Sunday morning, I rededicated my life to Christ. And I said to God, I said, Lord, because each of us know who we really are as a sinner. Not every sinner commits the same kind of sin. Some of us are not smoking sinners, drunken sinners, gambling sinners. And I said to the Lord, Lord, why did I commit sins that were not even a part of my nature or personality? And he said to me, the moment you put that idea on your head, you gave the devil the permission to yes. you. In the palace of all righteousness. Oh God. And you know, again, there's some in the body of Christ that are not teachable. You see them, you see pastors, you see first ladies, and everybody's adorning their feet. What you don't understand is you've opened the door for the devil to come. And he's very subtle. The devil is very subtle. He worked on you and you don't even know you're working on it. Yeah. Being worked on all of a sudden. You're not pushing for holiness anymore. You know, you're just coming down gradually one millimeter, one millimeter at a time. And eventually, you get to the bottom and you really don't know it. Because you started off with such a strength and a power and a force and a fierceness and all of a sudden you say, well, I'm just really not with the age. It's a lie. You don't mellow out. The older you get, the more God reveals to you. She wanted to go right back to where she should not have been. 
Paul tells us in 2 Thessalonians that Satan will use every kind of evil deception to fool those on their way to destruction because they refuse to love and accept the truth that would save them. When you keep rejecting the word of God, you will find yourself in those communities where God is always asking you to sow 1099, 654, 3273. This is going to happen by this prayer law. And all your enemies from God, you buy that one. Now you have to buy a second one because this one has prayer fasting on it. And it will do that. Then you have to buy a third one to remove the generation of this. You find yourself in communities like that.
academically or theologically, I have nothing to boast in. The only thing I have is my birth certificate. <laughs> but you have some people out there that are called cessationists, theologians, cessationists, which means they don't believe that God does certain things anymore. God don't heal anymore. And tongues was only for that one instance when the 120 spoke in the courtyard and people heard them or whatever. So tongues are not for today. And so all the things that you and I have proven, they say don't exist today. And as I was meditating upon it, that is why you have to study to show yourself approved. And you must have your personal relationship with God. And the Lord said to me, how come the one hand can you be saying, I am the same yesterday, today, and forever? And then say, I don't heal anymore. Does it make sense? He's the same. But God is not going to provide anymore. He's not sending money anymore. Listen, whatever God wants to duplicate, he will do it again. If you are on a cruise and, and, and the, the, the Hawaiian ship was about to be turned over, God can part the waters again and put the ship on dry ground if he wants to do it. I am not limiting God to stop in the sun for Joshua and not for me and God. Go right. 
going back to that life. I'm not going back to trying to build my future. I have a better future now. My life is great. I'm proud to be a Christian. And I have a Maserati outside. I've got the right to come here. Hallelujah. I know I have no big, luxurious apartment, but I have a roof over my head. I don't have caviar and truffles from Spain, but I have some good white rice. I'll check in that. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. I've got everything I need to make me happy. I am not eating it because I'm poor. I'm eating it because I love it. I'm eating it because my God God bless me with this. I'm eating it because He said He will give me everything. I'm telling you, bro. I'm not running competition. I'm not running competition. My God, there are lots of Christians out there back to gossip in the Susie. There are several Christians out there back to the demonic addiction that comes from playing a cultic mobile and video games. And if you notice, 99.99% of everything I'm on TV is either immoral or demonic. And we've got to get rid of all the social media and streaming apps. Because when you sit down uh, and you fill up your spirit with that, uh, that is what the enemy is going to use uh, to pull you out to the presence of God. Psalm 34, 40 says, depart from evil and do good. Proverbs 3, 7 says, do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart evil. Proverbs 16, 70 says, the path of the upright is to depart from evil. Whoever follows that path preserves its soul. We are living in a time like Mrs. Lot, that many in the body of Christ don't have time for the word. They get tired of the word. They don't want it. They want entertainment. And you look now, you see people having seesaws in church. You look now, you see people having haircuts in church. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Because uh, the fear of the Lord has departed out uh, of some people's lives and out of some churches. But when you understand who God is, the great King of glory, you will reverence and respect God. Uh, the house of God was designed. God said to Moses, uh, build me a sanctuary. Whom you obey, whether sin leading to death or 
obedience leads into righteousness. James 4, 4 says, do you not know that friendship in the world is enmity of God? Joel speaks about the heart of the wicked. And Joel 21, 14 to 15, it says, they say to God, depart from us, for we do not desire the knowledge of your ways. Who is the Almighty that we shall serve him? Mm -hmm. Genesis 19, 17 tells us that the angels brought Mrs. Lot and her family out of Sodom and said to them, escape for your life. Do not look back at the city lest you be destroyed. God's command was not only to prevent delay, it also showed that God demanded from Mrs. Law total repentance and relinquishment. Yes, yes. In heart, in desire, in will and actions of the idolatry, immorality, and wrongdoing she was a willing participant of in Sodom. Nobody had to beg her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She willingly did it. <laughs> Mrs. Lot was so willing to do as the Lord had commanded her. Because Satan and the pledge of sin had a stronger grip on her life than before she married Lot and became a worshiper of Yahweh. The scriptures goes on to tell us in Genesis 19, 20, says that Lot's wife was following behind. Mrs. Lot was behind her husband and not in front of him. They suggest that she didn't want to leave Sodom, even though God has sent his angels to deliver her from the destruction of the city that would happen as soon as she was safe. You know, there comes a time when a soul is so far gone in sin and wickedness and given over to the middle of Satan completely that the sinner actually loves sin more than righteousness. Psalm 52 verse 3 says, you love evil more than good. John 3, 19 to 20 said, this is the condemnation that light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. What is it God has judged or condemned to be destroyed that you still want to hold on to? What it is that God has asked you to give up that you still want to keep? Where has God asked you to leave that you still want to stay there because you would not ask God to increase your faith so that you can enter into the future? The Lord has prepared for you. Philippians 3, verses 13 to 14, Paul says, Brother, I come not myself to apprehend, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind I reach out forth to those things which are before. I press towards the mark of the price of the high calling of Christ. Genesis 19, 26 says that Mrs. Lot looked back. In other words, she left Sodom physically, but her heart remained in Sodom. The Hebrew word for look back that is used in Genesis 19, 26 is in the back. It means more than a quick glance over one shoulder. It means to gaze long in it. So she just didn't do so. She was actually looking. Yes. To look intently at. To look with close attention. To regard with pleasure, favor, or care. Cause to behold and consider. So she's looking back. Because she wants the life yes. that she lived. After Abraham stood and interceded with God till he got to ten people. Yes. And there were not ten people. And God is literally trying to save her life. Jesus. And it doesn't matter. She's looking back. Some of the reasons why Mrs. Lot looked back are she regretted having to leave the city and its immorality that she loved so fondly. She thought well of her comfortable life the people, and the lifestyle she enjoyed. Jesus says in Matthew 16, 26, what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? You know, the people that look at us real Christians are stupid. 
because we are rubbing two pennies together. Sometimes we are trying to stretch a dollar, as we would say. And they try to push it in your face. You are serving God and you have nothing. And they have all the money. You can only dream of a vacation and they have four already. You are taking the shoe to the shoemaker. Can I be real? Yes. To get some tax put in. You're wearing the same into court for the past 10 years. <laughs> and they look at you and they say to you, what is God doing for you? What is God doing for you? You don't have anything. It is sad, but even in the church we measure people. Or the check they can write, or the clothing that they can do. But I can guarantee you, the day that your spirit, because your spirit is your actual life. Yes. The soul is the real you. Yes. And this body house is you yes. and your life. The spirit is the actual life. The body needs the blood. The blood is the carry of life in the body. But it's your spirit that is your real life. Yes. So when your spirit and you, your life and you begin to leave this world. And you start to go to the sun. British Hawk, you start to head towards hell. You get a celebrity death. The more you a hundred days in the public, everybody get up and they eulogize you the best. But the moment that your life and you oh my God. leave this earth, if you're not heading to heaven with Lazarus, remember Lazarus the poor man? Yeah. That the dog used to lick his horse yeah. and he used to wait for food yeah. that left over. Amen. And because of that, 
she was turned into a pillar of salt. Oh my God. You see, Mrs. Long lost her life. Mm. Oh, let me say this first. Fire raining down from the sky is not an everyday occurrence. Mm. Anyone will want to see what it looks like. Yet God considered Mrs. Locke's action so great that he judged it immediately and she was turned into a pillar of salt. Why such a judgment? She lost her life because she looked back long at me. This was more than a quick glance. She was reluctant to leave. She desired more to return. In other words, the sin of Lot's wife was not in her actions, but in her heart. God wanted to make her new, but she loved her own sinful life more. She had a horizontal vision rather than a vertical vision in terms of looking up towards God. And so in conclusion, Jesus says in Luke 13, 17, 32, he said, remember Lot's wife? What was God's purpose in having the story of Mrs. Locke looking back and being turned into a pillar of salt recorded? Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 10, 11 that these things all happen to them as examples and they are written for our admonition. Just as Locke's wife lingered and looked back, there are some Christians that will not leave the world completely who will miss the rapture and be caught in the plague be poured out on the ungodly and the on and the antichrist. My God. Recently that there was a celebrity that got saved just by being baptized in water and having all of her implants and everything taken out and she had the idol idolatrous symbol on her body taken out. I have never seen salvation that comes from God that is man made. There's only one kind of salvation. You've got to acknowledge that you are a sinner. Yes. And that every sin you committed is against God. You've got to fall on your knees and repent in humility. Yes. And ask God for his saving grace. Yes. You've got to be washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. Are you hearing me? Yes. And you've got to be indwelt by the Holy Spirit. Yes. Amen. 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 It looked like Calvary didn't mean a thing. Jesus was crucified for nothing. He took all of that weapon by the Romans for nothing because you can get saved by a decision that you made and that's it. But hey, now there's a different story. The person is dressed. Oh, uh, this doesn't mean that I'm a Christian, you know. My relationship is between me and God and the Holy Spirit. And God is okay with me dressing in just a brassiere and whatever else is to the bottom. These things were written, saints. You've got to be serious with God. Amen. I ask you the question today. What it is Satan and the world has to offer that you will exchange for your soul? Because we can play church all we want. We can play preacher all we want. I can play evangelist all I want. I can preach like Peter. Lot's wife wasn't willing to present her body 
as a living sacrifice to God. What she chose to value in her heart led to sin and then to her death. I admonish you tonight. Do not go back. I just want to read you this last thing from history and I'm done. After conquering many kingdoms, Alexander the Great was returning home. On the way home he fell ill and he took him to his deathbed. With death staring him in the face, Alexander realized how his conquests, his great army, his sharp sword, and all his wealth was of no use. All of his wealth was of, was of no use. He no longed to reach home to see his mother's face and to bid her do. But he had to accept the fact that his sinking health would not permit him to reach his distant homeland. So the mighty conqueror lay prostrate and pale, helplessly waiting to breathe his last breath. He called his generals and said, I will depart from this world soon. I have three wishes. Please carry them out without fail. With tears flowing down his cheeks, the generals agreed to abide by the king's last wishes. My first desire is that, said Alexander, my physicians alone must carry my coffin. Secondly, I desire that when my coffin is being carried to the grave, the path leading to the graveyard be strewn with gold, silver, and precious stones which I have collected in my treasury. My third and last wish is that both my hands be kept dangling out of my coffin. The people who have gathered there wonder why the king made such a strange request. And no one dared bring the question to their lips. Alexander's favorite general kissed his hand and pressed them to his heart. O oh, king, we are sure you that all your wishes will be fulfilled. But tell us why do you make such strange wishes? At this Alexander said, I would like the world to know of the three lessons I have just learned. I want my physician to carry my coffin because people should realize that no doctor on this earth can really cure anybody. They are powerless and cannot save a person from the clutches of death. So let not people take life for granted. The second wish of strewn in gold, silver, and other precious riches on the path to the graveyard is to tell people that not even a fraction of gold will come with me. I spend all my life with the greed for power, earning riches but cannot take anything with me. Let people realize that it is a sheer waste of time to chase wealth. And about the third wish of having his hands dangling out of the coffin. He said, I wish my people to know that I came empty handed into this world and empty handed I go out of this world. And with these words he closed his eyes and died. Stand with me please in the presence of Don't go back. Don't go back. I believe that we are all Christians here tonight. I am a Christian. I don't want to go back. I don't want to back down I don't want to listen. I've come too far to turn. I've come too far to turn. It doesn't matter what people say about the church God has a remnant. There is a bride. I know that if the rapture comes now, then my hope will be empty. Because you sat under the anointing of the Holy Spirit and you've heard the word of God. What shall it profit a man to become a celebrity, to be famous, to be rich like Alexander the Great and miss out on heaven? Bow your heads. Father, tonight, in the name of Jesus Christ, we hearken to your word. God, we are not going back. We are not going back. We are not compromising. We are not setting our spiritual birthright. God, give us the grace to stand in the fight. The persecution has already begun. Laws are being enacted today to come against the righteous. Lord, you want us to agree to what you have condemned. But as we stand in this holy house, as we stand on that open heaven, in the presence of the King of Glory, I ask you to give your bishops and pastors, your apostles and prophets, your evangelists and teachers, your archbishop and elders, your ministers and deacons and deaconesses, give the body of Christ the grace.
not entertain that which is not of you. We will correct sin. We will do what you've commanded us to do. We will not call the favor of unrighteousness, but we will shine as living epistles red and red in the kingdom. Father, we are ready for the rapture. We bear the seed. We carry the seed. And our names are in that book. We love you with all our hearts, our soul, and our minds. And we say, come, Lord Jesus, come. Come, the bride is ready. Come, because we are not going back. Our minds are made up. But we are holy people and the royal grace of God. God bless you.